here we are continuing by the, the first video in which I explained about the Mendel experiment. And in this video we are going to study about the few topics or few terms which are frequently used while our study of the genetics will form. So let us understand the experiment again. Let us recall. Here we have used the first uh, cross that is involving the cross between the pure bred tall and the pure bred dwarf. As a result, the F1 generation, which is F1 first filial generation, it was expected by Mendel that all the plants which will be obtained after crossing the pure bred tall and the pure bred dwarf, that is one pair of contrasting trait that he considered. So he expected that the first generation would be all showing the blending. That means the plants will be medium heighted. But what the result what he obtained was completely different. That in the first generation he obtained all plants which were tall. Now this generation was named as F1 generation or the first filial generation. To understand the, the technique or uh, the pattern of inheritance, he crossed, that is he self, sorry, he self-pollinated the F1 generation. And he found that the plants obtained in the F2 generation were three tall and one dwarf. So the phenotype ratio showed three tall plants and one dwarf plant. Now, over here we have made a square which is known as a punit square and this square was developed by Reginal Punit. It is actually a graphical representation to get or to obtain the genetic combinations which are, uh, which are possible. So this enabled the Punit square is very helpful in understanding and formulating the or making the combinations possible so as to obtain various type of phenotypes. Now here the gametes which are being obtained obviously the gametes over here will be formed when they separate out while will be like this. So the combinations over here is one tall, second tall, third tall and the fourth one is a dwarf one. Now, as we said, the phenotype ratio and the genotype ratio, let us understand what do these terms mean. Now, when we call a factor or a gene, a factor or a gene is a unit of heredity. So, a gene is the functional unit of heredity and it is responsible for the transmission of the trait. Alleles, allelomorph or allelic pair is an alternate form of a gene. So here what we find is an allelic pair. The capital T and small t both are factors or genes. And capital T and capital T again. Capital T and small t. These are the allelic pairs. And a trait can only be exhibited if the genes are present in the form of an allele. A single gene will not be able to express itself unless and until it pairs with a similar type of a gene or a another different contrasting trait kind of a gene. The phenotype is the observable morphological appearance of any trait. So over here, when we are studying, when we say that 3 is to 1 is the phenotype ratio, that it is that what we observe in a plant. When we look at the plant, we find that there are 3 tall plants in F2 generation. And therefore, it is known as phenotype ratio. 3 goes for tall and 1 is for dwarf. So, 3 is to 1 phenotype ratio means there are 3 tall but 1 dwarf plants. It is the morphological appearance. 
genotype it is the genetic constitution of a trait genetic constitution of a trait over here is different it is one we have pure tall two the similar pair of uh, the sim uh, the similar allele pair and one again pure dwarf so the genotype ratio is 1 is to 2 is to 1 that is for the cross which is known as monohybrid cross that will be coming to the next part homozygous if the two alleles are same for a trait so when we talk over here let us look over here this and this is a homozygous condition. Here, both the members of an allylic pair are similar for a particular trait. Here, this is for dwarfness. And here, it is for tallness. But both the members or both the uh, members of the allylic pair are similar. Therefore, such a condition is homozygous allylic pair. Heterozygous when the alleles for a particular trait are dissimilar. Now as you can see over here in this condition it is not the, the members of the allylic pair are not similar. One is capital T that represents for tallness the other represents for dwarfness. Although the phenotype is showing as tallness as a trait. But here the trait, particular trait is having different members. So here this is a heterozygous condition. Now this is homozygous. When the members of allylic pair are similar, then it is a homozygous condition. If the members of a allylic pair for a particular trait are different, then it is a heterozygous condition. Also, when you observe the Punit square, the cross, over here it is coming as three tall. Although one is homozygous, two heterozygous, but all of them are showing the factor for tallness. And why they are showing tallness? Because of the presence of a dominant gene, which is common in all. And this gene, if present, whether in homozygous or heterozygous condition, it will be able to express itself, especially in the case of heterozygous. So if the heterozygous condition is there, the allele that expresses itself is known as the dominant gene or dominant allele. So here, capital T is the dominant allele. Capital T is the dominant allele, whereas in this case over here, the small t that it is it is covered, it is not able to express itself in a heterozygous condition. That is, it is known as recessive allele. It will be known as recessive allele. Now, this heterozygous condition which we obtain over here is also hybrid because it's a combination of both the uh, trait, both the alleles from different traits, that is the, from one trait that is tallness and dwarfness. So, hybrid, in a hybrid, the, cat, the allele that expresses itself is a dominant allele and the allele which is unable to express itself is the recessive allele. Again, another term which is the monohybrid cross. That is a cross when studied for a single contrasting trait. So here we are using only one trait that is tallness and dwarfness. It is a single contrasting trait. That type of a cross is known as monohybrid cross and the phenotype ratio for the monohybrid cross is always 3 to 1. Whereas for the genotype ratio will be 1 is to 2 is to 1. A dihybrid cross is between the, uh, uh, between the two members 
for a contrast, for a pair of contrasting traits. That means if uh, we are studying for the two pairs of contrasting traits, uh, suppose we are studying for the flower color and the tallness together, then it is known as the dihybrid cross. That we will be studying in later part of the videos or later uh, following videos. But here we have come upon with a monohybrid cross and that monohybrid cross will has definitely give us some points to think about that why only one allele is able to express itself or how does the allele separate out during the process of transmission of traits. So in the next video we will be talking about various laws of mental.